The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television. The following show is brought to you in part by Not Me in Arlington, Massachusetts. Not Me is a nonprofit organization with a mission to promote, advance, and unify self defense education and training for at risk populations. Visit Not Me at www.not me.org. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Crashing Glass podcast. We have a very special treat today. Author Heidi Thompson is with us to teach us a little bit about breathing in this episode's Breathe Chicks. So uh, I'd like to introduce you, of course, to my co-host as usual, Jill Henley, and also Heidi is here with us. But before we get into that, you may notice, listeners, that this week we've had some very special ads along with uh, the beautiful piece that we used from Marissa Levy to open and close the show. Um, You know, sometimes those donations just don't do it, and we have to have ads to support the show until we get there. So, hey, if you'd like to hear fewer ads, go to the website, basenaketv.com, and go ahead and donate to us there. Or if you love the ads, then feel free not to donate, but tell everyone you know who needs to advertise to go ahead and uh, and come on our show. Uh, So without further ado, welcome to this week's Crashing Glass. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so, Heidi, um, you know, we had talked about how it's really good sometimes before you go into a topic to sort of try out a little bit of, uh, or maybe even just discuss a little bit about being cognitive of your breathing. And uh, I thought you might start us off with some of that. Well, to start with, I, I did write a book, and it's called Calm, Focus, Joy, The Power of Breath Awareness. And the book teaches adults and children this amazingly unique technique of using your breath to develop focus, attention, and reduce stress. So this is what we are talking about today, and I hope your listeners will enjoy learning this technique. Excellent. So obviously a technique like this, especially when you're creating something that's unique and obviously people have heard of all kinds of other things, but I understand that your program's a little different than that. Could you tell us a little bit about your journey developing this system? Well, uh, breath awareness is a type of meditation and I started meditating when I was 20. Now I'm 55, so I've been doing it for a long time. But In my late 20s, I came across this technique called breath awareness, and it's very special, and it's very effective, and ever since I learned it, I've been practicing it practically every day and have noticed huge changes in my life, and I feel I have this valuable tool that when things get tough, I can use to calm down, see things clearly, and make adjustments and actually solve my problems. So I'm hoping to share this with many, many people. I've created programs for children and they love learning it. Adults have noticed when they practice that they feel better, They're, they actually can lower their blood pressure and, and stop you know, compulsive eating. So it's a very powerful technique. And I've been doing this for all these years and have come to the point in my life where I really want to help others with it. So that's pretty well the journey. It's a journey of learning it and practicing it and seeing the changes in my life. Now, Heidi, you mentioned that uh, breath awareness is a type of meditation. What would you say to people who say, oh, well, that sounds like a lot of religious hocus pocus? (laughs) Well, I never used the word meditation in my book because once I looked up the meaning of meditation, there's many meanings and there's a lot of different uh, interpretations of it. And because breath awareness is simply sitting there and being aware of your breath, I thought, well, it's not really religious. It's not really, you know, mystical. It's it's pretty practical. Just like walking down the street, you put one step forward and you, you get ahead. And breath awareness is sort of the same practical exercise. So people can use it for meditation if you want to develop sort of insights into who you are and and feel more peaceful and more compassionate, definitely this does help. But I would call it an exercise more than any kind of meditation. So Heidi, it does sound very practical and and it um, appeals to me because I I think of my own exercise regimen, physical exercise as as, um, 
quite practical as well. Would you put this towards more of mental exercise or, or, or physical too? Is it a combination of both? Well, it's definitely a mental exercise. You're, you, you're actually developing your attention, so you're developing a mental faculty. But what happens when you're practicing breath awareness is you change your physical chemistry. So in that sense, it is a physical exercise because you're changing. It's just like when you run fast, you increase adrenaline, dopamine, and those chemical changes happen. When you do breath awareness, you also experience these physical changes in your body. So yes, it's, it's both, but you're working more from the mind and then changing your body that way. Okay. So uh, just for the listeners who have um, at this point with us, at the end of, the, of today's podcast, Heidi is going to take us through five minutes of teaching us how to do breath awareness, teaching Holly and I, as well as all of you listeners. So I just wanted to make sure that I can put that out that there, that tickler. <laughs> you that, know, you, that, Jill, you know what we could do is mm-hmm. I could introduce just the technique quickly now, and while they're listening to the program, they might want to practice for a couple of minutes. So by the end of the program, they'll have had a little experience, and then we'll repeat sort of go over the technique. Okay, sounds oh, that perfect. sounds excellent. Okay, so, and <laughs> even you can practice. <laughs> you can actually do breath awareness when you're listening to people. You can do breath awareness when people are reprimanding you and getting mad at you. It's a very effective way to maintain control and peace inside while things are happening on the outside. And the technique, which is different than most breathing techniques, is simply focusing the attention on the small area of skin below your nostrils, sort of just above your upper lip, below your nostrils, there's a little patch of skin. And you stay there, feeling the breath flowing out of the nose and passing over the skin, and then breathing in again and feeling the breath, touching that little area as you, as you breathe in. So for the whole time that you're sitting, when you do breath awareness for five minutes or 20 minutes or an hour, that is all you do. You keep your attention on that tiny spot right below your nose, and you're feeling the breath. This is very different than many techniques. Uh, Other techniques will require you to bring your attention inside your body, feel the air in your stomach. Some techniques make you visualize the air coming in. This technique actually has nothing to do with your imagination and it has nothing to do with going inside your body. You're constantly staying right at, in that small area for the whole time. So that's a technique. And now, while you're doing that, we can talk about other things, what you can benefit from. Well, okay. speaking, speaking along those lines, you know, as we're breathing in and breathing out and we're feeling the breath there uh, on, on our upper lip, you know, how, how is this helpful? How is breath awareness helpful? How's it helped you? Okay, the first thing it helps you do is train your attention. Your attention, you can imagine your attention is a spotlight. And it's constantly looking at things that are interesting. So it's constantly moving back and forth and and it's thinking about things in the past or it's imagining things in the future. But your attention is busy, busy, busy. So what this does, it forces your attention to stay on one spot for a period of time. This goes completely against your habit of constantly thinking about all these things. Everyone talks about the busy mind, the monkey mind, the, the puppy dog mind, always running away and playing. But by keeping your attention on one spot, then your attention is taken care of for a little while. So you're sort of keeping, you're kind of saying you go to the corner and stay there for a while because I have other things that are more important to experience. And so when your attention is fixed, you will start experiencing other things in your body and in your mind. It's, it's, it's funny because we're always busy thinking, but actually when we stop thinking and stop imagining, other things have a chance to surface and you can experience yourself at different levels. 
the area between your nose and your upper lip is called the philtrum. Um, I guess is what I just found out. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. That's great. Yeah, well, I just I just looked it up. The name of that little that piece of skin that you were describing, and I think that what's so interesting about this about the is that I think a lot of times when people do get upset or anxious or like you pointed out, you can do this breath awareness when someone is reprimanding you or talking to you and, and, and angry is that you're breathing this this te technique um, Heidi that you've developed is through is breathing through your nose inhaling through your into your nose and exhaling out of your nose is that right or or I should say out of maybe both your nose and mouth well, and, it, and I found that that breathing through your nose is it's not I think a lot of people when they get upset they start to over breathe maybe through their mouth so is that at all part of it that just that calming the idea of breathing through your nose sometimes it has a calming effect in itself uh, it it certainly has a calming effect and the idea of the technique is to breathe naturally okay. and like you say generally we're breathing through our nose unless we have a cold so natural breathing is the key to the technique you just want to be breathing however you end up breathing you're not changing your breathing at all and this is the other important aspect of the technique is to learn how to observe yourself your breath without changing it and again this is unique from many other techniques that require you to change your breath breathe deep breathe slow this is completely different and by the way, I did not invent this technique. Okay, <laughs> this, okay. this has been around for 5,000 years, and okay. Buddha was using it as well. And ma many people, many, many people have used it. So yeah. I've just learned it, and then I'm trying to put it in sort of modern language and make it accessible to people. Okay. When you, you talk about it successfully, very successfully, it sounds like. <laughs> well, when you talk about that, that, um, putting it into modern language. I find it really interesting that in your book you call this 10-step awareness program uh, Mind Mastery. You know, you were talking about how you have the puppy dog running around, and when you have a puppy dog, you train a puppy dog, you know, so that it doesn't so much run around and get all right. over everything. <laughs> um, just give us a brief overview of that sort of Mind Mastery program. Okay, the, uh, the word Mind Mastery is, is the word that I came up with that best describes what you achieve if you practice breath awareness and as well children really love that name so it works well for children's programs uh, somehow they relate to the idea of gaining control over their mind and being a master many children they they haven't the self-confidence they don't have the skills in life or knowledge or experience to feel at all a master of anything so when they realize that they can practice breath awareness and master their busy mind being, and, and at will make it focus, they gain great power and children really love doing this exercise. And mind mastery is the idea of mastering that busy mind so that it actually starts working for you instead of against you. Uh, I have a little story in the book. I don't know how far you got into it. It's basically a story that takes place in India and there's a, t a tribe and every year these terrible elephants come and stampede their village and destroy everything and everyone thinks they're cursed but one day this young boy goes out and leaves the village for a year ends up finding a small elephant trains it and comes back into the village and shows everyone look this miserable terrifying animal is actually pretty useful if we train it and that's what we can do with our mind we train it to become an asset in our life and that's what breath awareness can do at the beginning of your book Heidi um, I did get you know I did look I do as much as I reading as I could in the last day or so and you do mention that since we're talking about children that young people have that the idea of the sensory addiction you know and and which is like Holly said brought up the puppy dog running in all different <laughs> minds going in all different directions so that story about India kind of relates right back to that where the the kids sometimes you know if they can learn how to um, I guess put the sen all the sensory the stuff around them and learn and learn how to focus it can be very effective for for children 
it's it's very effective and very necessary there is a what breath awareness does is actually train a faculty in the brain a faculty of cognition where you know the the part of the brain that makes you stop look and think before you react and this is a very important part of the brain that needs to be developed in children if they don't develop it and they get involved in all the sensory stimulation it's very difficult for them to ever train that part of the brain and then when they become adults they they might become hyperactive they might easily get addicted to sensory stimulation and they don't understand that they really have to train their mind not to sort of just go with whatever feels good otherwise they'll never develop you know uh they can't learn they they won't be able to develop a skill they won't be able to focus for a long time on something and then it causes problems in in relationships in their health and learning and all those other problems so children need to practice every day something that trains that part of the mind otherwise they won't have it well when you talk about training the this part of the mind you've introduced in your book this 10 step program could you give us a brief overview of what those 10 steps are the 10 step program is uh, something that's based on programs that i did with children in schools and i would come in for 10 sessions each session would be about an hour because i'd tell a story and they would have some art after the breath awareness session there's 10 steps because you want to start out just with a few minutes with children maybe 2 minutes maybe 3 minutes depending on how hyperactive the children are or how unaccustomed they are to this type of exercise and then every day you increase the time so you go from 2 minutes to 5 minutes to 10 minutes and they actually develop the ability to sit up to about 45 minutes without any problems at all and these are even children on ritalin and problem children and behavioral uh problem children as well so i've divided my steps in the book into a progressively challenging program and with each step a person will experience something different because the longer you sit and the more you work at it your experience you know these new experiences happen and for every step i've added in a story or an explanation of what they might be experiencing you can't experience it all in the first day so it's just important to see that as you progress you go deeper you understand your mind more you develop more control and by the end there's on the 10th step there's an important new technique that's introduced called sharing good will and this is where you take what you have experienced which you've developed more calm and peace inside yourself and you feel good and then you share it with others and this is a different technique so there's actually two techniques being taught in the book and Heidi's book is as she mentioned at the very beginning of our podcast it's called calm focus joy the power of breath awareness a practical guide for adults and children by Heidi Thompson and we'll make sure Heidi that we cover before the end you know where where to purchase the book um although actually why don't you put in let us know your website right now so if people want to go right to your website sure it's uh, calmfocusjoy.com <laughs> so appropriate and if yeah, you want it's nice and simple <laughs> i've decided that there's free shipping so if anyone's interested in my you know going to my website rather than amazon and barnes and noble then i thought i better offer a special so you know if they are interested in the book and it's a very in-depth manual if you are interested in teaching children or teaching your students in school or really learning how to do breath awareness and how to go deeper and deeper into it so it really changes your life i have added everything in the book that i thought was important So it's not a skimpy little, you know, mm -hmm. uh it's actually a, a real in-depth book. It you can't read it right away. You have to experience it one step at a time. It might take a year to, you know, get through the whole thing, but at least by the end you'll really understand breath awareness and how it's different from other techniques. 
Well, that said, Heidi, you know, you mentioned a lot about using this book to help children, but, you know, can this book work for adults? And if so, tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, when I first started writing the book, it was about children, because I think that children have the potential to develop focus and become self-confident and empowered with this technique. But then I realized, oh, well, who is going to teach the children? And then I realized, oh, okay, I have to first teach adults so well that they feel confident teaching their children. So that's why the book has the two parts. It has the 10 steps for adults and then the 10 steps for children. And then uh, quite a comprehensive part is teaching you how to teach children because that's an art as well. So actually it, it encompasses three levels of instruction. And as adults, what are some of the benefits that we can expect to get from the book? First, the first benefit, and maybe you're even experiencing it if you're practicing while listening, you will reduce stress. Breath awareness counters the effects and symptoms of stress you will immediately feel your heart rate slow down, your blood pressure will actually start dropping, your, your dopamine might start rising, your cortisol will lower, the stress hormones will decrease, so you will start feeling less stressed. And if, if you know, I think we all know, stress is the key problem. It underlies so many diseases and illnesses and conditions like depression and anxiety and ADD and ADHD. Stress, if you can manage stress, you will succeed in life. If you can't manage stress, you're going to be damaging yourself both mentally and physically. So I thought about it for a long time and if anything, just use breath awareness to reduce stress and all other things will unfold. There's other, many other benefits, but that in particular will help you right away. Heidi, that, that sounds, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing. <laughs> As much, I, I am practicing over here, and I, I do feel that my body, I mean, I can't tell if my heart rate is, is slowing, but I feel a uh, relaxation, you know, a little bit while I'm while I'm doing it. It's hard though because my mind is thinking about other things I want to ask you. <laughs> yes, I, and maybe so you should. <laughs> right. So I guess that's part of it. You have to learn to do this while also using your brain. I think which yeah. does differentiate it from other, from what a little bit I know about meditation, where they're asking you to clear your mind completely, or a type of uh, you know sometimes with yoga and there's a little bit of meditation at the end of the yoga uh, class, and, and this does seem very different. It, would you expand on that a little bit? Yes. Um, the interesting uh, comment you made about trying to talk and think about questions and doing breath awareness at the same time is actually impossible. So you'll notice that you can either do breath awareness or you can be thinking. And if you notice your attention, this searchlight will go back and forth so fast you think you're doing both at the same time, but actually, if you really observe what's going on, you can only feel and nothing else, or you can be thinking. You can't be doing both at the same time. So it is very difficult to do things and speak and interview people while doing breath awareness, but while I'm yapping and yapping, you, you have the opportunity <laughs> to, uh, to feel your breath. So that's a big difference is when you're feeling, you're not thinking. Therefore, the longer you stay in the feeling part of your brain, the longer you are aware of your breath, you're not thinking. And if you're not thinking, you're not reacting to your thoughts, and therefore you're not creating more stress. So you're going on vacation and allowing your body to calm down and actually counter those symptoms of stress. As long as you're thinking about problems and, and anticipating and worrying, you, your stress levels will be higher and you'll be, it'll be taxing your body, taxing your health. So go on vacation and stay in the feeling side of your brain for a while. 
So obviously, you know, even having conversations and thinking up questions and doing day-to-day -day things can present a challenge here. What are some of the other challenges that one can expect when they start this practice of breathing awareness? Well, there are, there are many challenges. One is first learning the technique so you're doing it correctly because if you start mixing all the other techniques that you may have learned, you won't feel the effect as, as readily. You'll feel a little bit. So that's a big challenge is to separate your other techniques at least for a while and try breath awareness without resorting to things. The problem is when you're sitting quietly, the habit mind starts bubbling up and the habit mind will want you to stop doing breath awareness because habits hate breath awareness. Because when you're doing breath awareness, you're not allowing any of your habits to govern you and they start rebelling. This is the major problem that will happen. And your habit mind will start saying, I'm out of here, you know, I, I can't stand this. I'm uncomfortable. My knee is hurting. This shouldn't be painful. Blah, 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 blah. And then before you know it, you're not doing breath awareness anymore. And you're just basically perpetuating these old habits that you've developed since childhood. And the nice thing is, if you keep doing breath awareness, those habits get weaker and weaker and soon you're the master of your mind and not your habits. So that's your number one problem. Another problem is just the fatigue that may might come, you know, you, you suddenly relaxed and many of us have never allowed ourselves to relax and immediately we want to fall asleep. Ah, this is when you have to actually maybe get up and take a few deep breaths and move around and say, I will not fall asleep. I'm going to sit back and stay with my breath. So that's another problem that can happen. So those two problems are probably the biggest that you'll encounter. It's not big problems. Heidi, I know I, I would love for you to go up into a little more depth about um, how you you have been teaching this to children and, and in what what form you know are you doing this in going into schools and are you specifically working with um, ADHD uh, diagnosed children and how does I guess I'm curious how exactly does does that go how does it help the kids well, there's so many you know kids now that are diagnosed with ADHD and it's definitely something that comes up a lot in in my world you know given my kids ages and, and friends of mine that have 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 kids that have been diagnosed and I also wondered as a second part to the question is if it helps if you have found that this the breath awareness helps people with um, OCD obsessive compulsive disorder as, as you mentioned the habit part of your brain so those are a little couple of thoughts that came up and then I'm going to do breath awareness while you answer <laughs> <laughs> well breath awareness is something that will help children with ADD and ADHD and compulsive behavior because it trains the part of the brain that makes you think before you react and many people who are compulsive, they're constantly reacting to a fear that they have inside them and it's all, you know, happening on an unconscious level. So when you train and develop, you actually develop this part of the brain that lets you think before reacting, then you can actually help these people, adults and children, gain strength in the mind and gain a better faculty to observe before they react because this is what you're training when you're sitting quietly and all these habits start pushing you and wanting you to react to the pain you might feel instead of reacting you actually just stay with your breath you're developing the non-objective observation or the ability to observe without reacting this helps attention deficit children and it helps people suffering from compulsive behavior because they're, they're basically being governed by this compulsiveness to do something and they're not in control anymore. It's their subconscious mind is controlling them. So it gives people power. And I've worked with, when I was doing uh, many programs in the 90s, I made sure that I tried groups of children from all different areas of life, children with dis disabilities or high potential learners, blind children, uh, children in wheelchairs, children in trouble with the law, uh, rebellious teenagers, 
because I wanted to see how to how if it was possible to teach them if they would be receptive to this and they all were it was amazing and I think the problem in society is we we bring in these children into the world and they're subject to so much stimulation so much external busyness that they're kind of like they have no tools to deal with these things and unless we can incorporate time in their life with education to, to say okay we're going to educate your mind for an hour we're going to sit still and start observing our mind and our body we have to give children the opportunity to develop that part of the brain if we don't they have no no way of coping and they will be constantly under stress and again then start suffering all those those health problems that come from stress and it, it's too bad that you know in i think things are changing but school should have at least a half an hour each day for every student to be able to turn within themselves and discover who they are and calm down and experience peace because if they never experience peace how will they ever value peace how will they ever know what it is so i think our job as adults and parents and teachers is to facilitate the experience of peace within each child so they know what it's all about now heidi on that front you know a few years ago i read the book spark by john rady and he talks about how exercise is also very important uh... for children struggling with focus issues and i understand that uh... that your method also includes some whole some wholesome living elements as well how does that affect the breathing regimen and also why is it important well wholesome wholesome living is one of the four key elements into developing a positive focus because you can develop focus but you might not be happy in the end so my goal with the book is to show that there are parts of developing focus that have have to be attended to and one of these parts is called wholesome conduct or wholesome living it's very important if you want to be happy and calm and wise to really make healthy choices in what you do, what you eat, how you interact with others, consciously choosing the healthier thing at all times is very important because then you build up a strong body. You're not constantly irritating your nervous system with drugs or, or uh, devitalized food. So wholesome living goes hand in hand with focus training. And I don't think you can expect children to focus well if they're if they have a poor diet, if they have no exercise. So all those other things are really important. Even though my book isn't a diet book or an exercise book, I do have a chapter that explains basic uh, healthy living that will help you as a parent or a teacher to explain to children. Look at you know maybe it's better we don't drink the pop let's drink water instead because of this and this reason and you'll focus better when you focus better you'll be happier you'll achieve your goals you'll you'll have more friends and all those other great things so it's worth you know making healthy choices because in the end you benefit a hundred times that too I, I think that sounds great Holly go ahead I'll let you go on well, to, along those lines, you know, I know that the practice of healthy living is not really the, uh, you mentioned that there are four, uh, there are four different parts of this practice as well that are not included maybe or that are, it, or maybe are inclusive of the 10 steps. What are the other ones, obviously, if healthful okay. living is one? Well, before you, I think you can understand why the four are important. It's really important to know why do breath awareness. The main reason is to become happier more peaceful and more self-knowledgeable like w you want to grow in wisdom so the four parts of breath awareness or my mind mastery program the first part is learning breath awareness and even if you practice breath awareness all the other three parts will happen naturally so you don't have to go on a diet you don't really have to change much if you practice breath awareness it changes you know <laughs> it comes it's sort of the byproduct of practicing breath awareness but 
to be conscious of these four parts, one is the breath awareness, which develops your focus and attention. The second is wholesome living, so you're making sure that you eat healthy, you don't abuse people with negative words, and you, you take care of your body, you don't abuse your own body, and then you start, you know, you, you don't put yourself down because you're, that's abusing yourself. So you start being aware of your actions and make sure that they're wholesome actions, fruitful actions. This is the second step. The third step, you can't really force it. It again happens naturally when you do breath awareness and that is awakening wisdom. And when you awaken wisdom, you become very happy, you grow in your capacity to love because you understand others, you understand life. And this wisdom happens when you do breath awareness. And it, it's not a secret. You can develop wisdom if you're practicing this, this technique. And the wisdom you develop is the wisdom of change as you're sitting there and, and you notice your body going through all these different sensations, but you're just watching, you know, your body because you're staying with your breath and you notice how your stress levels disappear and you go, oh, my body's changing. And wisdom comes when you understand everything changes. So why react to it? Why get upset? Why crave something? Just watch things come and go. Watch your body change. One day it's more peaceful. One day it's full of stress. But you don't have to let all these things sort of control you. And this is the wisdom you develop when you do breath awareness. The final and very important part of breath awareness is what I call sharing goodwill or loving kindness. And many people and, and religions and philosophers, they talk about the power of sharing your goodness, the, the good feelings that you've developed, the, the, the generosity that you feel with other people. And this comes naturally as well. And I think that's why I'm, I'm talking on the radio. It's because it just comes naturally that I want others to feel the peace that I've experienced. I, I want others to feel the love and the joy that I do feel in my life. So this comes, the sharing comes at the end. In the beginning, you might be too upset or, or you might not feel peace inside, so you're really not really ready for sharing. But it sort of comes out of when you do feel peaceful, calm, and, and sort of full of this compassion. So those are the four aspects, which are all talked about in the book. And children go through the four, and adults go through the four, and it's all important to make sure that you're successfully experiencing more joy and health in your life. It it sounds Heidi just that it there's no there's nothing there's no reason not to do it. <laughs> and I, and I guess that's why, you know, that's why you do want to spread the word. Um, I just wanted to ask about one of the parts of your book that we haven't we've touched on. I know I think a lot of the, the a lot of the main pieces, the main ideas, but what about, um, you mentioned uprooting negative seeds, and why is that important? Well, as you know, we all carry with us old conditioning from our childhood and from bad experiences. We've developed a conditioned mind. This is natural to human beings. We're conditioned animals. Uh, we're constantly, you know, doing habits, you know, and it's all fine and dandy, but when you want to free yourself from habits, when your habits are controlling you, then, then you want to get deeper. You want to go to the source of your habit. And that means entering your unconscious mind. And most of the times, we can sort of remedy the situation on the surface. You know, we smile. We, we learn how to think positively. We learn how to interact with people. But then... If suddenly you're faced with a situation that you have suppressed, you know, something triggers some of that deep hate or that deep anger or that deep fear in you, all that sort of superficial niceness goes out the window and you're screaming at someone or even, you know, uh, goodness knows what we do when our subconscious mind takes control. 
So to be really free and happy, we have to clean out the old conditioning, the conditioning that is lying there, and I call them negative seeds, waiting for a little bit of negativity to sprout. And breath awareness, this is the amazing part of breath awareness, it actually works at the subconscious levels of your mind, cleaning out these negative seeds. And this might be difficult to understand, but maybe I can give a little sort of illustration. For example, let's say, uh, let's look at sensations in our body. Sensations are that those feelings, those icky feelings, uh, the feelings w- that irritate us, that make us upset or moody. Sensations govern us. So what breath awareness does, it, it lets us connect with sensations. They're not emotions, they're actual sensations in the body. And when you're feeling your breath, you are focusing on the sensation caused by the breath. And it's either tickling or stinging or it's kind of heat, hot, sweaty feeling. So you're focusing on sensations the whole time you're doing breath awareness. But you're not thinking, oh, I don't like this sensation, or you're not running away from the sensation because feeling the breath is usually very subtle, so the sensations aren't painful. But as you're sitting, what will happen is things will start changing on your body, and you may start feeling more intense pain. And this is, again, just sensations. But by staying focused on the breath, you let these painful sensations, whether it's in your knee or your back or your head, surface and, and dissipate. So the pain arises and goes away and you're, you're still focused on your breath. What you don't realize is you're actually letting subconscious pain, a pain that you're subconsciously reacting to at the deeper levels without even knowing it, you're letting that pain surface and have an outlet and you're not reacting to it. And this is amazing because normally your subconscious mind is constantly reacting to painful sensations, but you're changing the habit and after a session of breath awareness, you're going to feel happier, you're going to feel freer because you've actually gotten rid of of some of that old conditioning, some of those old habits. And the more you practice, the more you get rid of this this underlying crap, I guess you could call it, It, the stuff that keeps you down and keeps you unhappy and keeps you depressed, starts having a way to get out of your body through the sensation. You know, you have to go through the pain, but you don't react to it like you normally do. So I don't know if that's clear, that's sort of the subconscious uh, expl- well, this is an explanation of how you clean out your subconscious mind from old habit. It's pretty intense. <laughs> I hope your listeners could follow that. Yes, that definitely. That was that was quite a journey. And I mean, if you if you had to kind of boil that down, you know, I understand from your book there are seven stages of the mind experience. Yes, if once you're sitting, this all comes to you. All this information in the book comes to you when you're sitting. So the first thing, because your mind is calm and now your, your attention is still because it's focused on one spot, you can start observing your mind very clearly. You are going to observe things like, let's say a mosquito lands on your knee. The first thing you're going to observe is the sensation. Ah, oh, something's landed on my knee. And you might have heard the buzzing. Ah, oh, this is a mosquito. And then you might start reacting inside. Oh, I've got to slap this mosquito. I've got to get rid of it. So, but because you're focusing on your breath and you're not moving and you're not doing anything, you see how your mind, your habit mind wants to react. So you see that the seven stages of the mind start with the perception of this little bothersome mosquito and how it's touching your body and sending signals to your brain you're going to notice that your brain starts creating a reaction, a chemical re- you know, reaction, because it's going to want to slap that mosquito. So actually all your blood starts going to your extremities and your, your heart starts pounding. <laughs> this may be a little extreme for a little mosquito. But 
then you can notice, oh, now bl chemicals are flowing through my body wanting me to slap the mosquito, but still you don't slap the mosquito. So you're watching, ah, then you notice, now you've stopped, you're not reacting. This is the other part of the brain where you make a choice. You, do, you decide it, I'm not going to get rid of the mosquito. I'll just, okay, for this experiment, I'm going to get a mosquito bite, but I'm going to see what happens. So you continue observing your brain. Eventually, after you notice that you haven't reacted, then whatever your experience was, which was actually a self-disciplined experience, it becomes part of your neural network. You've actually changed your brain a little bit. And then it becomes a conditioned memory. So then next time you're out somewhere in the woods and a mosquito falls on your, uh, comes and lands on your leg, you're going to have a whole different reaction to the mosquito than you did before you, you did this breath awareness exercise and retrained your brain. So while you're sitting, you can start observing how your mind works and how you create habits and how you create your conditioning. Because when you know how you create your own conditioning, you can start dissolving that old conditioning. It's very important to understand how we create who we are so that we're, we can be free, you know, we can, we can develop mastery over all those processes. So those are sort of the, the steps in a nutshell. I find the conscious level feeling and thinking versus the subconscious level just fascinating. And you've done such a nice job of explaining it because it, it, it is an intense subject. So it's been wonderful to listen to all of your all of the things that you've learned <laughs> and that you that and you are seem like an excellent teacher so the the kids that get to have you are very lucky oh well i'm very lucky to have them because i think this is why i wrote the book because it's so fun teaching children it's so rewarding that i thought oh if if there's anyone out there that is seeking purpose this would be a fabulous thing to do, you know. Whether you're a grandmother or a, you know a parent or a homeschooling person who wants to do a group with children, it's so rewarding because the kids they just look so peaceful and happy, and and they're bubbling over with all this wisdom. You think, oh, oh, this is fun. I'm going to do more. So, hopefully, people will have that enjoyment of of teaching children because I certainly love it. It's the biggest you know highlight of my life. So what do we expect next from you, maybe even later this year? Well, I'm just working at trying to get the word out about breath awareness. I'm, I'm thinking of maybe trying public speaking because I really enjoy having an audience that I can work through breath awareness with them so they can go away feeling the experience of breath awareness. So this is what I'm working on, and hopefully I can, I can do that. It's, you know, a challenge, but um, it's a goal. Well, you know, Heidi, you did promise us at the top of the show that you walk us through another exercise here at the end now that our listeners have been practicing. So uh, okay. take it away. Okay. So I'll go through the, for the formal technique of breath awareness. The first thing is when you sit comfortably in a position, make sure your back is not leaning back on the couch or, or you're not lying down because your tendency will be to fall asleep. Your goal is to be alert and attentive. So however you sit, make sure your back is nice and straight. Then close your eyes and focus your attention on your breath, touching your skin just below your nose. And keep your attention there for the whole time. Now the whole time means choosing a time that you think you'll be successful with. So if you think you can sit for one minute and stay focused on the breath for one minute, then that is the time. You can set a little timer and go for one minute. If you think you can sit for five minutes, staying attentive of the breath, then choose five minutes. The important thing is do not give up after four minutes because what happens is you're actually perpetuating the habit of giving up before you're finished. So you don't want to perpetuate habits. You want to stay till the five minutes is up then you're done. And you go off and you can do whatever you want for the whole day. It doesn't matter. But then if you want to do a half an hour, okay, you do it for a half an hour. If you want to do it for an hour, you do it for an hour. 
determination to stay for the whole time is really important. It develops a, a real s- quality, a strength of mind. And basically, that's your technique. You can choose a time of day in the morning or night or even I do it sometimes when I can't sleep at 3 in the morning. Whenever you do it, make sure nobody's going to bother you, that you have time for yourself. And just practice. And all the things that are in my book, you will discover yourself. And then you can write your own book. Because all that knowledge comes to you. And um, this is ba- uh, you know, basically the technique. And you stay focused on the natural breath. Sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's even. Whatever your breath is in the moment, you just observe it. You don't change it. And you feel it touching your skin. You might feel it tickling your skin or it might be itchy. But that's where you stay. You stay with the sensations and do not react. And then that's the technique. So, Well, Heidi, <laughs> it's been great having you on. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? I'm just hoping that Everyone experiences it, even if they try it for five minutes. Just experience it one time, and you'll know that it is a wonderful, simple, cheap way to reduce stress, feel calm, and start really tapping into who you are. And we are way more than we think we are. We are so deep, so expansive inside us. We have so much wisdom within us. We just have to know how to get there. So I I wish everyone super success on their journey, and I love to hear from you. If you do have an experience, please email me, and, you know, good luck. That's all. And one more time, the website for the listeners, Heidi? It's calmfocusedjoy.com. And please, you know, if you've listened to the podcast, please let me know that you've tried breath awareness. I really would love to hear from you. I have my email on there. And if you don't like buying books or getting books from websites, I, it's everywhere, you know, Amazon, and you can find it in bookstores. And so it's Calm and Focus have, Joy. <laughs> and I have a copy if anyone um, local to me wants to look at it and, and check it out before they purchase. Um, Heidi, thank you so much. Um, there's a quote that you have on um, one of your uh, handouts that you sent that that um, a researcher observed about about your technique, your breath awareness, that it's fascinating to see the brain's um, plasticity. And by practicing meditation, we can play an active role in changing the brain and increasing our well-being. And, and you've been very convincing of that during this, during this show. And, and I think that I know for myself, I will, I'm going to try to set the timer for, I'm going to start with one, <laughs> one minute. <laughs> one minute. I had one little boy, he was uh, eight years old, a very, very severe attention deficit child on Ritalin, etc., etc. The first time he sat, he sat for one minute, and in great big, bold writing in his journal, he said, I sat for one minute. By the end of 10 days, we all sat for 45, and that little boy sat for 50 minutes, and he got up after everyone who was wandering around and talking, and he came up to me and said, I sat for 50 minutes. I couldn't believe it. And he was so proud of himself. And we're so proud of ourselves today. Thanks again, Uh Heidi. Thank you. Thanks again.